everybody, it's Candy from The Candy Show. Welcome back to my channel and today is an episode of Candy Reads. We're doing a book review of another Philippa Gregory book. This is The Boleyn Inheritance. And just to give you a heads up, I am on a bit of the Philippa Gregory kick. So you will see quite a few book reviews of her books. I'm sort of catching up on the few that I have not read yet. This is another fantastic one in her series. Philippa Gregory, of course, very prolific. Uh, historical writer, writes almost exclusively about uh, the Victorian court. However, in her earlier writing, she did do a, a trilogy that was a little removed from that, and um, a couple of uh, Virgin Skies and Virgin Earth, which were sort of about uh, the beginning of contact here in North America, which I really enjoyed those. But this particular book is 518 pages of fiction. It was published in 2006 by Touchstone Press, and it's very interestingly written. It's basically based on three, the lives of three women, and it's told from the perspective of those three women. So one chapter is from one woman, the next chapter will be from the next woman, next chapter from the third woman, and so on. The three women who are highlighted in this book are Anne of Cleves, Anne of Cleves being um, sort of a... Uh, a very matronly-like, uh, uptight, quiet woman who is living alone with her mother and brother. Her brother is very abusive and her mother plays along with her brother. Her father is deceased and she gets married off to Henry VIII. She becomes the fourth wife of Henry VIII after three... Fourth? Third or fourth? Yeah. After um, three heads have already rolled. So she's pretty nervous when she comes into the situation and in the end she ends up being the only woman of these three who uh, survive. I don't consider these spoilers because these are historic novels so these characters existed and most people know the story already anyway. So The other woman, the second woman featured is a woman named Catherine Howard who isn't actually a woman, she's a girl. She's 15 years old. She's the cousin of Anne Boleyn, whose head has already ended up in a basket after being married to Henry VIII. She is brought to the court at the same time that Anne of Cleves comes to the court, and she, in fact, woos Henry VIII so that he sets aside Anne of Cleves to marry her. At the time, he is 47 and extremely obese with a rotting sore in his leg. Everything about him is grotesque. And she's a cute little 15 year old girl who has to like put up with him crawling on top of her every night. Um, and sadly, you know, it, it culminates to her facing her death at the age of 16. But that's what I find so fascinating with these books is what um, unbelievable atrocities women had to go through at such a young age back then, particularly if you're in that court system. The third and final woman who's featured in the book is Jane Rotford, who is also a Boleyn um, somewhere. I can't remember exactly how she is a Boleyn, but she's uh, the niece of a quite a powerful man at court. And she is a bit of um, a rat fink, <laughs> to say. I, I guess she she's not above ratting out in order to keep herself alive. So she led to the death of one of King Henry's wives along with her own husband uh, because she gave false testimony towards them. She's kind of renowned for giving false testimony and in the end she is trying very hard to secure her own survival as she is a lady-in-waiting to basically three queens in a row. So that's uh, in a nutshell what the plot line is about. It takes us through that whole uh, time when Henry VIII was by all accounts basically losing his mind and a very very scary time in England. So fast moving, um, great great read. I see my batteries running out so I will just tell you follow me on Goodreads under the candy show. If you like historical fiction go out and get this. You're gonna love it. Don't drink and drive. Wear a condom every time and I'll see you in the next video. <gasps> Give me a thumbs up as well if you like the video. Bye.